Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, we take a closer look at the Leica M5, which was the very first Leica M rangefinder featuring through the lens metering and the very last to be built entirely by hand in Wetzlar using the traditional adjust and fit method. If you look at it, you can immediately see it. The Leica M5 is the odd one out in the Leica M lineup. It comes with a slightly different design and button layout is a little bit larger and heavier and because of that is also incompatible with certain earlier accessories and even lenses. And all these factors contributed to the fact that already when it was introduced in 1971 and arguably to this very day, the Leica M5 polarizes the Leica community. It was also a commercial failure at the time and put Leica on the brink of bankruptcy and significantly contributed to Leica overhauling its production methods and moving away from the uh, mentioned adjust and fit method to the um, correct and replace method that they used from then on. Um, the Leica M5 could be had for a very long time for relatively little money because it was not really sought after and was only rediscovered by Japanese collectors in the 1990s. And even when I started out shooting film and looked at the Leica M rangefinders and decided on which model to, to, to buy, um, it was still relatively inexpensive, costing around 500 to 600 euros. By now, times have changed and I a little bit regret that I never bought one <laughs> earlier. By now, depending on the condition, you pay 1400 to 1800 euros for a Leica M5 body. This particular model that we have here is a Leica M5 from 1973 that comes with a special on engraving on the bottom plate that apparently commemorates a business success um, and was given to an employee of NSU Audi. So Audi, the German um, car manufacturer, um, and some company that belonged to it was bought by it at some point and they are commemorating a, a business deal that they made and it contains all sorts of um, signatures and the exact date um, when this was kind of um, handed over. And this particular camera here was um, given to us by Meister Camera um, Hamburg, the Leica store. They have also some stores in Munich and Berlin and I actually purchased my very first Leica and the 50mm Somicron that is also featured here in the video um, at their Leica store here in Munich. And they were kind enough to lend us this camera for a review and I'm really excited of course to get an opportunity to test this camera. Um, they send along not just a really nice black rope strap but also the original manual from um, the 1970s and um, interestingly a Fuji Acrus um, 102 and I thought this would be um, nice to kind of complement uh, the, the setup here and use some additional Fuji film so we are settling on a Fuji Provia 100 and the Fuji Color um, C200 films and um, uh, kind of as a nod to all the Japanese collectors who saved the M5 and a, a lot of M5 bodies probably from obscurity um, and ensured that we have still so many bodies in great condition today. Um, all the films were scanned and developed by my trusted Carmen Cida lab in Spain. Um, so thanks for doing that. A short shout out here as well. And um, as always, we took the camera out for a photo walk here in and around Munich. And uh, we'll do a deep dive on all its features and accessories. And of course, also discuss our personal findings in the review. So let's dive in there. Firefly, how short is life? I dreamt we had more than 20. I have seen this before, and I have lived more than plenty. Sing my 
songs when I'm gone I know sorrow, I know pain Let them have me if I'm ready Let's look at the basics first. The Leica M5 is a 35mm interchangeable lens manual exposure camera with a mechanical shutter. It comes not just with a built-in rangefinder, but here for the very first time with a through the lens, so TTL metering system. Leica introduced this feature to keep the M series relevant in an increasingly competitive market that was dominated by single lens reflex cameras with built-in light meters. The M5 was meant as a huge leap forward for Leica, but it ended up dividing the Leica community. The camera comes with a really bright viewfinder with parallax correction that also displays the correct frame lines um, fitting the attached lens. Most importantly, it also comes with a so-called exposure bar at the bottom of the viewfinder that lets users get correct exposure by overlapping the two lines here. And next to it, as you can see, there is also the currently selected shutter speed um, displayed. And that was, of course, a complete novelty. And in combination with the large shutter speed dial on the top plate that overhangs the front of the camera and was therefore easily accessible via your index finger, even if you have the camera up at eye level, that was a really, really nice um, novelty and one of the most important features that also fans of the Leica M5.2 today when um, arguing for their buying decision and why they made this decision. Yet these technical advances also brought about some changes in the design of the Leica M5. It basically needed room for the built-in light meter and this is why the camera is a little bit larger here, especially on the left side where you can also see there is a compartment for the battery that was of course connected to the light meter. It is also 100 gram heavier. And the major change here is that um, because of the different layout, it became incompatible to certain earlier accessories like the Moto Winder, which was of course um, a pain point for certain Leica aficionados at the time. And what is even more important is that the way the light meter was positioned affected which lenses could be used on the camera. The built-in CDS um, cell is positioned on a swing arm that is between um, the lens, so the rear of the lens and the, um, the shutter curtain. And that meant that certain wide-angle lenses, so a 21mm and the 28mm, the older ones, um, were incompatible because of the protruding rear elements without any kind of modifications. Of course, Leica offered at the time to modify these lenses to be compatible with the M5 as well. But if you used an, a traditional um, wide-angle lens here, it, the protruding rear element would potentially damage the swing arm with the CDS cell. The same holds true, the same problem um, it holds true for uh, collapsible lenses, at least certain ones. Um, and again, Leica uh, offered to modify them to be only collapsible to a certain degree so that it wouldn't interfere, or some lenses couldn't be collapsed at all because, again, it would interfere with the swing arm here. And of course, that was not appreciated by some people um, at the time. Um, the original version here, like ours, um, also came with two strap lugs on the left side of the camera, which meant that it could only be carried vertically around your neck or across your um, shoulder, which has its benefits, but again, some Leica fans at the time complained immediately, wanting to carry the camera horizontally like the former models, and this is why um, Leica introduced a third lock on the right side of the camera um, so that it can be carried like that. Um, the result of all this is that um, the camera became um, a, a commercial failure and what contributed to that is that, that Leica introduced already in 1973, so only two years after it had introduced the M5, the significantly smaller and cheaper Leica CL which they had created in collaboration with Minolta. 
And um, not only that, they also continue to sell the M4, so the former model, um, the all manual one, with the classic design um, unofficially on the side. So it was still possible to get one. And if you were a professional photographer in the market for like a M body, you of course were reading the reviews and were thinking hard, what are the features that you really need? and in which camera to invest. And if you were an amateur, you basically had the Leica CL that was certainly catered to your needs and that had it. The whole point was to get more people into the M-mount system, M-mount lens system, and provide a less expensive access to ambitious amateurs and um, certain similar audiences. So all this contributed to the fact that um, sales were already, the production was already um, stopped um, uh, after only um, 33,900 um, units were produced um, because of the, the slow sales and um, that meant that about 10,000, a bit more than 10,000 units in chrome had been produced, the one color that was available and uh, around um, 23,000 and a bit more in um, the black chrome that you can see here in our version. What is important to point out is that the black chrome is of course not black paint. Um, so the black paint versions that Leica is famous for and that are also um, heavily sought after because of the brassing that they develop over time, the really nice patina. This does not hold true for the M5. Um, instead, um, some people report, and I can testify to that, depending on the light, the black chrome um, sometimes looks a little bit dirty <laughs> um, because it has certain effects here on it, um, despite the fact that the camera is not really dirty. So you should take that into consideration. If you are looking for some brassing, you won't get it with the black chrome version of the M5. <laughs> Let's now look at the features of the Leica M5 one by one. On the top plate you can find a dedicated ISO dial that supports speeds from ISO 6 all the way up to 3200 and as you can see the indication not only features the traditional DIN dial but also the modern ASA or ISO um, information. Next to it is a pictogram indicating the film plane as well as an engraving saying Leitz Wetzler Germany and as many of you will know the same engraving is heavily sought after in modern digital M cameras and you can basically choose whether you want one without it or this particular one uh, here that was already there in the traditional Leica M bodies and also here on the M5. There's also a hot shoe with an X engraving next to it that of course indicates that it, the contact here works um, with electronic flashes. This circuit here is disconnected from the X and AM contacts on the back of the camera which are covered up in our version here. Then next to it is of course the large shutter speed dial that I already talked about and on top of it is the film advance lever that as always in a single motion not only advances um, the film but also cocks the shutter and sets the frame counter to one more frame. On top of that resides the shutter release button um, that is connected to a completely redesigned horizontally moving focal plane um, shutter that is by the way considered the quietest or among the quietest in the entire Leica M setup. Um, 
What is interesting is when pressing the shutter, it also uh, not only of course controls the shutter curtain to the selected speed and so forth, but it also removes the swing arm that is located behind the lens and in front of the shutter curtain. And you can feel that when traveling down with your finger that a lot is going on. And because it affects the light metering when pressing it, um, you should never press it before taking the shot. So it's not like with certain single lens reflex cameras where you can half press down the, the um, shutter release button. You should never do that because it might affect your um, metering here. Um, what is also important to point out is that the um, shutter um, speeds can be selected between one one thousandth of a second and half a second on the shutter speed dial, but then there's also a bulb mode and certain additional um, longer speeds that are still connected to the exposure meter. So you get the correct exposure for your um, speed or you get a reading, a light meter reading, um, but it is um, not um, automatically then disengaging or, or closing the shutter again. So this needs to be done with a typical cable release like with all bulb modes, um, but at least you get a connection to the light meter and get a proper reading. The redesigned um, shutter um, travels um, the, the curtains travel a little bit slower, which affects the flash synchronization um, speed, um, which is in this case 1 50th of a second versus the more common 1 60th of a second. On the corner of the top plate is a beautiful um, frame counter that in the case of the black um, chrome Leica M5 is also um, comes with a black disc with white typography. And as you can see here in direct comparison to the Leica M6, um, this is different here. This was uh, a change in design. The Leica M6 comes with a white um, disc and um, black typography. And personally, I really prefer that black disc with white typography that comes in really, really beautifully. When you look at the layout of the top plate, you also notice that it's um, somewhat different because the film rewind crank that is usually placed on the left side in all uh, other Leica M models um, had been redesigned and can be found now in a larger version on the bottom plate, um, as you can see here. On the bottom plate next to our custom engraving, which we have here, you of course also have um, a typical um, crank to or a lever to open up the bottom plate in order to um, put in your film um, in the traditional way. And of course, there's also a tripod uh, connection um, if, if you need it. Firefly, how short is life? I dreamt we had more than 20. This before and I have lived more than plenty There's no red dot on the front of the camera, just the clean 1970s style typography stating Leica M5. Next to it are the windows for the rangefinder, the viewfinder, and the one illuminating the frame lights inside the viewfinder. Then of course there's the M bayonet with a red button next to it to disengage the lens, a self timer lever, and on the other side a frame selector. Um, lever that in this case also functions as a battery check by pulling it all the way to the side and then looking through the viewfinder to get the battery status. Speaking of the battery, it is um, the battery compartment is placed between the two lugs that I previously mentioned that are located on the left side. And here the light meter is traditionally um, run with a um, a mercury battery with 1.35 volt and of course the mercury batteries have been um, outlawed um, internationally because of their toxicity and by now it is uh, more common to use either wine cells that can be purchased online or um, traditional LR44 batteries that are very common by now 
um, in combination with an MR9 adapter that in, contains enough resistance to bring down the 1.5 voltage of the LR44 batteries to the needed um, current and voltage. Um, on the back of the camera is a threaded viewfinder um, window which um, of course supports the typical accessories like a diopter for instance. Then there are the aforementioned X and M contacts that are covered up here and then there was a novelty um, at the back that is a mixture of an ISO dial and the reciprocal settings um, dial and here it feels like um, this camera is really in between because as you know in the past the the style here was a reminder for photographers which kind of film they put into the camera and um, then later on starting with the M6 this became the actual ISO dial that was also connected to the light meter and all the way up to the um, the, the interesting digital likers that do without a screen at the back but introduce the Leica um, the, the ISO dial here as well um, uh, this has become uh, the, the use of that dial and the M5 is really in between here because it on the one side still serves as a reminder which film you put in there offering additional information like is it a tungsten or daylight balanced film but it also features that reciprocal um, setting information here and the idea was that you could basically for longer readings in bulb mode um, look inside the viewfinder, get your exposure metering, and then transfer that to that dial here and see, oh, for which aperture you would get which kind of exposure settings. And the M5 viewfinder has a 0.72 um, times magnification and a base length, a, a rangefinder base length of um, 60 um, 8.5 millimeter and an effective um, rangefinder base length of 49.32 um, millimeters that result in a focus accuracy of 79 percent. The um, M5 only features that one magnification as in comparison to for instance the M6 that came in different viewfinder magnifications and also the M um, P, for instance, that can be purchased today, also in different viewfinder magnifications here, you only have that one setting. It supports frame lines um, of 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 90 millimeter, and 135 millimeter, and only the latter comes always combined with this 30, 35 millimeter. So if you attach a 35 millimeter lens, you also get the 135 millimeter frame lines displayed. If you have a 50 millimeter lens attached, as we have here with the 50 millimeter Somicron, for instance, you only see these frame lines, um, the rangefinder patch in the center, and interestingly, uh, an area with a metered area, so to speak, um, because as you can see, it is more like a spot meter that is built in, and then you, you can basically take deliberately your reading in your scene, meter for that, and then reposition to to um, get correct exposure and meter very, very precisely.
So what are our personal impressions? The Leica M5 is certainly the wrong choice for Leica M purists. Yet if you are in the market for a Leica M rangefinder with a built-in light meter, there are not that many options as you know. There's the M5, the M6, the M7 and the MP. And of all these, the Leica M5 is still the least expensive one, um, despite the fact that it was still built by hand in Wetzlar in the traditional method, a quality that you can feel until this very day. Um, if you then also appreciate its somewhat different 1970s design and maybe even the different button layout and appreciate the oversized dial, um, then you can definitely take a look at it and consider it. And you should also be aware that um, until the Leica M7, the M5 was the only one that also displayed the shutter speed inside the viewfinder. So that is important to you. The M6, for instance, would not be a choice because it doesn't do that. In terms of quality, I couldn't find a big difference to my Leica M6 um, when I compared them. Um, what I found um, striking is that being used to the red arrows um, inside the viewfinder with the light meter, I personally found the, um, the exposure bar a bit more intuitive that we have here in the M5. It felt a bit more intuitive to get these two lines um, on top of each other instead of just having these arrows and following them until you have that um, point in the middle and, and a confirmation on both sides that this is the correct exposure. So I feel like here the M5 did a lot of things already right and Personally, when using the camera, I didn't notice the larger weight and size um, because at the end of the day, I use it like any Leica M camera. So my finger, my thumb is kind of tucked in between the film advance lever um, and I'm holding it here on the right side with my finger, index finger on the front on the shutter speed dial or on the um, shutter release button. And on the left, with my left hand, I'm not really holding that body, the larger part of the body, but most of the time Instead, I'm, um, of course, manipulating the lens, either the aperture or the focusing um, ring. And because of that, I, I didn't really notice um, the larger size here. Um, personally, I also appreciated the strap lugs being on the left side and carrying the camera vertically around my neck, especially with that ra rather short rope strap. It reminded me a little bit of the Fuji um, medium format range finders, which we have reviewed here on the channel before that have a similar arrangement. And that also makes sense precisely because you typically only hold your um, hold the camera with your right hand and operate it there and only in rare cases you need it um, and differently. Of course, you need to focus, have a strap that doesn't interfere with you putting up the camera at eye level. So if you have a longer strap then that kind of uh, goes in front of the viewfinder window, that would be annoying. But it, at least in our case here with that strap, it didn't happen to me. Pressing the shutter release button is also a really rewarding experience and despite everything that is going on, I can testify that it is really quiet and when compared to my Leica M6, it felt a little bit um, uh, less noisy really, so really, really nice and quiet and you get that beautiful, rich sound when pressing the shutter release. Um, of course, I only used it for a couple of weeks here and um, to do a proper personal impression section, I also talked to a couple of long-term users of the Leica M5. And interestingly, Albert from the Carmen Cedar lab that developed and scanned our films here, he um, owns this camera for the last three years and uses it on a really regular basis. And um, he sent me a couple of quotes um, that I found interesting. He basically stated that, quote, the light meter is one of the most accurate I've ever used inside a camera and, quote, the build quality is amazing. And furthermore, what I really liked is he, he pointed out that he likes to be, quote, part of the odd ones who enjoy the road less traveled, unquote. Um, and Robert Frost aside here, he has a point um, because um, in a day and age where everyone is basically buying and aspiring to own the very same um, camera models, it feels refreshing to me to see that certain people choose differently and really find the camera that best fits their shooting style and what is important to them. And if you want to have the shutter speed displayed inside your viewfinder and if you appreciate a really accurate light meter with even the metering zone in the 
displayed in the viewfinder, then the M5 is certainly a really interesting and good choice. And speaking of Robert Frost and the roads not taken, it is also interesting to think of the Leica M5 as a road not taken for Leica. And I'm wondering how later Leica M models would have looked like if the M5 turn had turned out a commercial success. So because if you look at the lineup today, the M5 stands out and you see a lot of digital Leica M cameras even referring, referencing back repeatedly to earlier Leica M models and giving all these nods and hints to the history of the camera, even um, introducing ISO dials that resemble the original Leica M3 rewind crank, for instance. And you have all this tradition and richness there. And the M5 tried to do that leap and to do that leap forward, but ended up, as mentioned before, dividing the community and not advancing the system, but instead they had to go back to a Leica M42 afterwards that resembled the earlier models in the overall design. And then also had to create a built-in light meter with the M6 that yeah, made use of the room differently and that also functioned differently. And this I think is interesting to think of that camera as a road not taken that of course affected or could have affected the entire lineup um, further down the road. If you are all for it now, after my <laughs> praising words, um, um, please take into consideration that it is incompatible with certain accessories like the motor winder, that it does not work nicely with certain older wide angle lenses um, because of the protruding rear elements, as, uh, elements. And it does also not work with collapsible lenses and um, also not the one with any kind of goggles. So the 50 millimeter Somicron DR, for instance, that comes with goggles or the 35 millimeter lens um, that came with goggles for the original M3, these um, are just not compatible. So uh, a really interesting odd one out piece from the 1970s um, that at least we here really appreciated shooting. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Leica M5, the 1970s underdog that makes purists frown and puts a smile on the faces of fans and maybe even makes them giggle because they get a really good deal when they originally purchased this M5. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. And we all also enjoy reading your comments in the comment section below. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.